Good morning. Thank you for joining today's Appian Community Webinar. This webinar will be focusing on a new feature of PowerBuilder 2017 R2. Specifically, we'll be talking about how official support is provided for the PostgreSQL database via ODBC drivers. Today's presentation is authored by Bruce Armstrong, Appian MVP, and Community Volunteer. Before we get started, I did wanted to share with you that this is a community presentation, so it's on a volunteer basis, and just please keep in mind that Appian is not making any warranties with respect to what is said during this presentation. During the presentation, you can feel free to ask questions at any time. There's no need to wait till the end. Just expand the webinar console, as shown in the screenshot, and go ahead and answer as many questions as you have. In case we don't answer your question during the webinar, we will answer it via email after. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Bruce Armstrong, and he'll take it away. So once again, we're going to start off with the agenda. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to discuss who I am, who I work for, and why you might be interested in what I have to say about Power Builder. Uh, then we'll have an introduction to the new feature. And then we'll look at using PostgreSQL in the database painter, how to use uh, RPC funk declarations, how to use Progress, Progress SQL from uh, data windows. Um, we'll summarize everything and then we'll have a question and answer series. So first, a little bit about me. I think most people on the call probably already know who I am. I've been around uh, for quite some time talking about PowerBuilder. Uh, back in the Team PowerSoft days, Team Sybase, SAP Mentor, uh, now an app and MPV. What that means is that I spend a lot of time in uh, news groups and forums answering uh, questions people have, uh, write uh, technical articles, uh, do webcasts like this, just telling people um, about how they can use PowerBuilder. And the company I work for is called Integrated Data Services. They've been around since 1997. I joined them in 2004. Uh, before that, I was an um, independent contractor doing Power Builder work. The company um, started uh, with a client server Power Builder application they were marketing. Uh, we've largely migrated that uh, to JavaScript HTML5, but uh, we do have some customers that still, for you know, purposes of their own, still want to use the uh, client server version and so we continue to support that we're, we're still actively doing popular development work okay enough about uh, about me we're going to talk about this new feature that came out in 2017 r2 this is the ability to use postgres sql uh, postgres sql is an open source database license under the uh, postgres sql license similar to the mit license <laughs> i've got a link in the presentation for getting the downloads to install it on the Windows operating system. And because um, PowerBuilder talks to most, well, there, it, you know, there, there's databases like Oracle that, that it talks to through using native drivers, but most other databases it talks to through ODBC. And so we're going to need to get an ODBC driver for PostgreSQL. And I'm, the one I'm going to use is the one from PostgreSQL, although there are a number of third party ODBC drivers as well. And there isn't really a, much of a sample database that comes with PostgreSQL. So what I did is I got a copy of the Booktown sample database from a, from a book that O'Reilly Media published on PostgreSQL. They have a GitHub page where they uh, make the script available that you can then run, and it will install that database in your PostgreSQL database. You run that usually using uh, PG Admin. That's a, an admin utility uh, for PostgreSQL. Actually, as of uh, version 9.3 of... Uh, of PostgreSQL, they no longer support that. Uh, they don't. Something. They no longer distribute that with the PostgreSQL. You have to go download it separately. Um, so, if you don't have the PG admin available um, for the version of uh, uh, a PostgreSQL that you have, uh, you can go download that from uh, from their website. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Windows operating system and create an ODBC database profile there. Now, because PowerBuilder, uh, the PowerBuilder IDE is 32-bit, we're going to create this as a 32-bit IDE, uh, I'm sorry, 32-bit uh, ODBC profile. 
if you're going to uh, end up generating a 64-bit application from PowerBuild uh, using this, you would also want to generate or create a 64-bit uh, ODBC profile as well, and likely name them the same, or deal with that in your code, um, where you might toggle between the two depending on whether the uh, the application was running in 32 or 64-bit mode. So um, here I've, I've got the Booktown database that I'm connecting to. That's the one I imported using that, that script from the O'Reilly site. I happen to be running uh, this PostgreSQL database on the same machine as the PowerBuilder IDE. So um, I've just got the server set to local host. And just because um, anybody's used SQL anywhere for a really long time or is used to having username be DBA and the password be SQL, that's what I created it. Uh, when I added this uh, database to uh, PostgreSQL. Once we've got the ODBC profile defined in the Windows operating system, we go ahead and PowerBuilder now, and we create a ODBC profile in PowerBuilder that references that uh, Windows operating system uh, ODBC um, uh, profile. And then once again, I'm using DBA and uh, SQL as the username and password. Okay, at this point, you can you can connect to the database. You can go in the database painter. You can see up here at the top. These are some of the functions um, that are in the database. And then we got the list of tables, and we've got a couple of views there. So you can see functions, tables, and views. Now, what you can't do at the moment is see the text of functions. Um, so if you click on one of those, you'll just get a message in the in the painter just saying that um, this isn't supported right now. I don't know if there are plans to support that at some point. If that's something you want to do, once again, you use something like PG Admin to go in and, and look at and, and potentially edit the, uh, the uh, text of, of uh, procedures and functions. But the, any, anything else you can do with basically any other database you can do here. I can enter uh, SQL in here. I can execute it. I can do updates down here and uh, send the data back to the database, just like, just like with any other database you work with in PowerBuilder. So the first thing I'm going to look at um, is uh, using um, RPC Funk declarations. Uh, what that is, um, that's supported with a number of different databases, um, Oracle among those. The idea is that there are stored functions, stored procedures in your database, and what you can do is you can take a user object, inherit it from type transaction. And I, you see that right there at the top here. This, that's what this user object is uh, inherited from. You go into the local external functions, you right click in the painter, and you, you say that you want to declare a RPC func uh, based on a remote stored procedure or function. That brings up this dialog that shows you the stored procedures or functions in the database you can call. What you end up doing then is you end up making these functions of this user object. Then you go into the application uh, object and you declare that the uh, type that's used to generate uh, the SQL CA global variable is of this object type. And what that ends up doing is that makes these functions something you can call as methods of SQL CA. Now, I, I much prefer doing this than embedded SQL. I'm actually not going to cover embedded SQL. I'm sure it works. It's that I, do, I you know, long term, I find that embedded SQL and PowerBiller makes maintenance a nightmare. And so I try to avoid it as much as possible. I tend to use uh, uh, data, data windows and RPC funk calls. Now, if you, uh, that makes the code much more uh, transportable across databases. If you're gonna take this approach, which you, and assuming that all the databases you support, um, support uh, RPC funk calls um, from PowerBuilder, what you would do is maybe create a uh, different transaction object uh, for each of the different databases, and then switch them out as needed to uh, to work with the different databases. So what I've done here is I've gone and grabbed one of these functions from the uh, Booktown database. Uh, triple price. All it does is takes whatever you, you pass in and multiplies by three. It's not a particularly uh, uh, in, um, involved function, but it's just for this demo. Now, the one thing you need to be uh, aware of with PostgreSQL is Postgres, PostgreSQL doesn't require you to name parameters in a remote procedure call. And if you find, as in the case of the Booktown database, the, the uh, parameters aren't named, 
want to make sure I said that right. You don't need to write any parameters in a function or, or a procedure call. So if the the uh, parameters aren't named in the in the function or procedure in the database, what's going to happen is when you paste it into Power Builder, it's not going to have a parameter name. Now Power Builder requires parameter names in the RPC func declarations, and so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to add. That's what I did here. What I what I originally got was function double type triple price double RPC func, and Power Builder will choke on that syntax. So I added a parameter name, and then Power Builder was happy, and the function worked fine. So here's an example of some PowerScript I used to call it. Um, that, that, rather trivial. I just took a little local variable, set its value, ran it into the function, grabbed the value that came back out, and displayed uh, both values in a, in a message box. So let's jump to uh, our virtual machine here where I've got uh, a PowerBiller app where I'm doing this. So this is my um, this is my NTR, my transaction. Oh, okay, yeah, I've got database trace turned on. So as soon as I tried to open that up, it fired up the database trace. So I go to the R, the local external functions here. There's my, my RPC func call. I go to the um, application object. Go to the properties, go to additional properties, go to the variable types, and down here notice that I'm using NTR rather than transaction class that uh, for the for the SQL CA global variable. And so at that point, I can go in here, and this button right here is where I call that RPC func, and it's just a method now of SQL CA. So let's run that real quick. Boom, it, uh, you know, 12.5 times 3 is 37.5. Okay, so that's how that's how you do an RPC phone call. Okay, let's go back to the slides. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at using PostgreSQL from data windows. Now, just doing selects, inserts, updates, and deletes, that's no problem. Um, what we're looking at specifically here is um, identity column functionality. So this is this is something that uh, PostgreSQL does support. Um, when you go to create a identity column for your table, there are actually two methods of doing it. The original one they they introduced uh, in version six point four is to declare a column you want to be a to uh, type serial. And what uh, PostgreSQL does then is once you declare it to be a type serial, it creates a sequence in the background and automatically uses that sequence to populate the value of the auto incrementing column. The newer method, which is introduced in version 10, uses the SQL standard uh, syntax for creating the identity column. Um, what it does in the background is exactly the same thing as the first method. In other words, the only difference between the two methods is the syntax in your create table statement. It doesn't affect the way that it's actually uh, implemented under the covers. And the good thing about that um, is that means that regardless of which method you use to create the auto incrementing column, the way you retrieve the value from it is exactly the same. It's you use the select curval and then you use the sequence name um, and that will give you the, the value that was just assigned in the insert statement, okay? Now, you know, okay, that's great, but how do we know what the sequence name was? Well, the way the way that PostgreSQL defines the sequences when you when you create the either the uh, the serial column type or the identity column is it takes the table name underscore column name underscore sequence. So we always know that the um, the sequence that's being used to populate our our incrementing column is going to have that format. Now, if you look at the PB ODB, uh, ODB 170.ini field that came with Power Builder, you're going to find this statement in um, that file for getting the uh, value of the um, generated uh, um, identity column value. I, this, this doesn't actually work for me. And so what I did is I changed it uh, to match the method of of driving the uh, in, the uh, sequence value, the sequence uh, column name, I'm sorry, sequence name uh, here. 
So what I have, in, what I've changed this value to is get identity equals select current value at table name dot underscore at column name dot underscore sequence. And that, that's work, that works for me. So now you go into the data window painter, you find your auto incrementing column, you, you, you tell Power Builder that the identity, what the, the name of the identity column is. And at that point, it will not provide a value, Power Builder will not provide a value for the identity column. Instead, it will send it as a null and re, then retrieve the value using the function we just, we just uh, uh, indicated before and insert that into the data window. So let's go see what that looks like. So um, if we go into the update properties here, you can see that the ID value is identified as the identity column. And I'm gonna run this. And so uh, this is the data one up here that has the identity column in it. So I'm gonna insert a value. I'm gonna say uh, yada. And I'm gonna say update. And notice the the value of from the sequence is grabbed and inserted into the data window. So that's how we use on recommending uh, columns with uh, with uh, PostgreSQL. So the other thing we're going to look at um, one other um, non-standard way that you would use uh, data windows with PostgreSQL, and this is a this is supported by some other databases, is the ability to use a stored procedure as the source of your data window. Now this is supported. Now, there's a couple of things you need to do in order to make sure it works though. Um, you do need to name your parameters in the function uh, that you create in the um, in PostgreSQL. Um, let's say, as I mentioned before, uh, PostgreSQL does not require that, but Power Builder does. Uh, when, it, when, the, uh, you know, when we did the RPC func declaration, we were able to go in there and grab the syntax that was, genera that was generated in that declaration and modify it to add the parameter name. That's something that we can't do with the data window uh, unless we wanted to do like an added source on it. Uh, so just to make things simpler, name your parameters in your function. The other thing you're going to need to do is, and this is just the way that you get data back in a result set from PostgreSQL, is to return a table type. Uh, so that, here's an example that I'm using uh, once again from that, for that, book, that uh, uh, Booktown database sample. So I, uh, I, I say get books by title. I've named my parameter and it's of type text. I'm going to return a table that has the ID value of the book and the full title of the book. Um, and then down here I have my select and where it says where books title like. And then this is this is a reference to my parameter. Now um, I'm not absolutely um, um, an expert on PostgreSQL, so I'm not trying to, to put together um, the um, percent signs on this. I'm going to actually pass them in from Power Builder. That's what that looks like. The other thing we're going to need to do, and this is what we're going to need to do in Power Builder, is we need to go to our uh, database connection and make sure that you put you check the strip parameters name option in the uh, in the database connection. Uh, this is uh, in the IDE so that you can develop against the uh, store procedure, and then you're also have to going to have to include it in the um, database connection settings uh, in the application. So this is an example of doing that. Here's where we've got my ODB seal profile. And I've got my DBA SQL, of course, and I've got the strip parameters names equal yes. Okay, so let's go uh, let's go back to our virtual machine real quick, see what that looks like. Um, so what you would do is you'd, you'd step through the the, um, the process of creating a data window, but you would select um, store procedure as um, as what you're going to base the, uh, the the data window on, rather than SQL. A dialog appears. You select the function you're going to use. Uh, it Power Builder calls the store procedure just to get an idea what the result set looks like and creates the data window for you. Uh, this one right here. So there's the ID value, ID column, and the title column that it created automatically for me. And we can we can actually look here at the store procedure that it's calling. Here's my um, 
and I'm not sure why I had that. I'm going to go ahead and change that. I think I was testing something else and seeing if chip parameter's name uh, may have caused it to fail, but uh, we actually want that chip parameter's name in there. So, so good thing we looked here. And I'll turn off tracing while I'm at it. Okay. So uh, this is the window that we're going to call that in. And um, so uh, actually, uh, had that up a minute ago. Here's your retrieve. Uh, nothing unusual here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve all the books that begin with the word the, or actually the, the letters T H E. It could it, maybe the book begins with there or something. So um, and then I've passed in the uh, the percent sign there. So the wild card. Okay. Go ahead and run this. Retrieve and there's all the books in the Booktown database that start with the word the. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, so in summary, um, with the changes in Power Builder 2017 R2, there is now support for Postgres SQL, and it becomes a great additional database choice. Uh, because it is open source, um, it doesn't require uh, um, that you pay for licenses. Um, you can, if you're going to use this uh, for production, um, purchase support. But if you're doing um, you know, just uh, evaluation or demos or just the initial development, um, and you and you don't want to buy a database to make that work. This is this is great for that. In particular, now that SQL Anywhere is no longer packaged with the product, it, it gives us another database um, for doing uh, you know the, the initial development training and demos that we used to use SQL Anywhere for. Okay, um, it's time for questions and answers.